Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot for coming. My name is Miroslav Tinovsky. I'm from Prague, PM, and I work for Avast. And today I'll be talking about uh, RabbitMQ. So, uh, it's a 20 minutes, so I'll go quite quickly uh, about the things, but what I want to do first is some motivation, so I'll tell you why you should or could care about RabbitMQ. Then I'll cover RabbitMQ basics. Then I'll show you what modules are available on CPAN. And lastly, I'll quickly introduce a module that I've written, it's, uh, which somehow simplifies the usage of that. Uh, OK, so why, why should you care? Uh, imagine that you have two, let's say, long-running services on different machines. One wants to send a message to another. And just for uh, easier imagination or to easier imagination, I'll give you a more particular example. Let's say that you have a crawler service which crawls some website and whenever it finds an interesting link it just sends a message to a download, downloader service with a message like hey found this link could you download it and I'll immediately propose a solution how you could do this one option is that you open an HTTP port of, of the downloader service ah sorry could you hear me before? <laughs> uh, and then the crawler service can send a message to, to that open port. Let's say it opens a, a, an interface, accept message, and just the crawler just send post. I found this link. Please download. Downloader starts downloading that, and, and that's it. You can imagine that there might be some problems with this solution. Uh, first problem with, with this solution that when downloader starts downloading the, the, the URL but then it fails or get, gets killed or whatever, uh, because the communication like uh, happened before, the crawler has no, no way how to, how to discover that. Uh, so the link for the, the URL of that link is lost forever and it never gets downloaded. Another problem might appear if, if the downloader has an outage, then crawler, when it wants to send a message, it gets blocked because there's no interface to send to. Another problem that might appear is if, you, if, if one downloader is not enough, if, if there are too many links to download, then the crawler would like to, to spread the uh, downloading to multiple downloaders. And if you want to do this, you, you need to introduce some way of load balancing so that, so that the, the different, uh, or the, every downloader receives its task and, and can, do, can start downloading. This is possible to do with, with the load balancer, but it's, it's somehow Add some complexity to your system. Or if you want to introduce a new version of, of the downloader, what you also need to, let's say, you want to create a new version of the downloader, but you don't want to stop the previous version until you are sure that the new version works. So what you would like to do is to introduce the new version to send the message, the message is also to the new version to see, to, to debug it and, and see if it works. But what you need to do is to adjust crawler so that it sends it to both downloader version one and downloader version, version two. So I'll propose another solution which, uh, which contains RabbitMQ, this, this high availability High, highly available messenger, but before I do that, I'll quickly go through 
the features of, of RabbitMQ so, this, so that you can imagine how, how it can work. RabbitMQ is an implementation of AMQP protocol and it basically works like this. You have uh, a sender and some recipients. The sender sends a message to an exchange. This is some post box for the, for the sender when it wants to deliver that message. And then RabbitMQ cares about forwarding the message to all queues that are bound to that exchange. And then you can have recipients which consume that queues and get the, get the messages. This is slightly more complicated in, in real because there, there is a concept of routing. So you can have routing key specified with your message and uh, RabbitMQ does, can, can do some, some more advanced routing, but I'll not cover this. Maybe if we have time at the end, I'll, I'll get back to that. So now instead of this naive solution, we have, we have this RabbitMQ solution. So instead of uh, opening HTTP port, now crawler sends the message to RabbitMQ exchange and downloader is set up so that it consumes the messages that appear in, in the queue bound to that exchange. Surprisingly, this solves all the problems. So if downloader fails during the process, the message gets back to the queue. So when it's up again, it can fetch the message again. If downloader has an outage, then RabbitMQ is still there and the exchange still listens. So, so crawler is not blocked and can publish the message. If you want to uh, run multiple instances of downloader, you just create several other consumers of the same queue. And what's nice about that is that whenever one link gets downloaded, the downloader takes another message. So, so it's load balanced by the performance of the downloaders. And if you want to try a new version of the downloader, you just create another queue, bind it to the same exchange where the sender sends the messages, and you can you get a copy of, of each message so you can try out what it does. Apart from that, you also get some nice features for free, so you get a nice GUI where you can see what happens in the what happens in the queues, what data are sent through, and what's what's the rates and so on. You can monitor if, for example, if if uh, downloaders are slow, then you can see that the number of messages in the in the queues increases. And if you want to debug, if you want to look into what's in the in the messages, you can just bind another queue and simply get and see what's what's in the messages. There's also some API if you want to do, for example, automated monitoring of that. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say in general about RabbitMQ. Are there, are there any questions so far? No. So is that all clear? That sounds good. Uh, so now, now I'll let's see what, what options or what we want, what we need to do if we want to implement it in Perl. If we want to implement a sender in Perl, it's very easy. We just need to include somewhere in the code this one line which publishes a message into into a, an exchange. So, so that's very easy. 
if you if we want to implement a recipient that's slightly more complicated because we want to ensure that every time a message appears in, in the queue we have a process that consumes it and and runs some code over that message so here's a an example of such code where we have the method get message which just looks into the queue and if there's a message it returns it if not it returns undef so uh, so this works in general but the problem is that it uh, it's an infinite loop and there's no no uh, it just consumes all one thread of, of, of a CPU because it's activating for, for a message in the in the queue. So it's better to use some kind of event loop or something or s select call or something like that to to avoid this active waiting. So what's what's the options on on CPAN? Yeah, one more one more thing. When you implement a publisher, it's good to ensure that the publisher has an exchange to write to. And if you implement a consumer, it's good to ensure that the consumer has the queue to read from. And there's a uh, like corresponding exchange and binding for, for that queue, so, so that there, there are actually messages that can be read from that queue. And now for the CPAN options. So, as I said, you better use some select or poll call or an event loop. So this is derived from the from from actually the event loops that exist in Perl. Uh, so first library there is, is for RabbitMQ is net AMQP RabbitMQ, which is a wrapper of the C implementation of, of RabbitMQ protocol. And it works, it's documented, it looks, it looks good, and it doesn't uh, solve the problem with the active waiting of the consumer. So there is another library called Crixa, which builds up on that and, and, and adds uh, and solves this problem using poll call. So, then there is net async MQP, which is uh, based on IO async event loop. It looks also good. It's nice, clean API. Then there is any event rabbit MQ, which again, it's the same thing, builds on top of any event. And Mojo rabbit MQ client is re implementation of the any event uh, thing on top of Mojo event loop. So it's just there are different implementations, but just depends on what uh, what event loop you use. So uh, we were choosing the library to use uh, uh, like few years ago, and I think at that time the best option was the any event one. I'm not sure nowadays which which one is the best. All of them actually look good. The Mojo is the youngest, but it also looks promising. So if you want to choose a library for yourself, you just need to decide on what event loop you want to use. That's the main criteria. Uh, we were using, or we are using an event RabbitMQ, and there, so I'll be talking mostly about that from now on. And there's one problem with that, and the problem is, Quite clearly visible from from the synopsis of, of the of the module that it's quite a quite a complicated code. So it's it's so long, so it doesn't fit on slides. So it's not clearly visible for you the problem. So I'll simplify it first. Now I'll strip the connection options because it's just parameters how to connect to the RabbitMQ server. And now I'll also strip all. Error handling, so so you can see, this is this is what remains, and I argue it's it's still not a very nice piece of code because it's uh, several uh, embedded callbacks, 
and the only thing that this code does is that it declares an exchange in your, in your RapidMQ instance. So you need one, two, three, four embedded callbacks to only declare your, your exchange. As I said, we, we went for this module, so I somehow needed to address this, this issue with, with that because I, I wrote several services and, and, and like I, I hated like embedding more and more callbacks. So, so I wrote a just small convenience layer on top of that, which is called any event RabbitMQ pops up. And with that, if you want to implement consumer, which is declaring uh, your queue, declaring exchange, and binding the exchange to that queue, and then starting consuming your your messages. It's just a code like this. It's, it hides all that uh, all that boilerplate code from from you. So let's see what what it has. It's, as I said, it's just a convenience layer over any event MQ or any event Rabbit MQ. Uh, there is no like this code shown does all, all the things that I said, that so, so it declares all the stuff that you need. And then it starts consuming. You can confirm individual messages, which is something that, that the protocol enables, but it, it's, it's not as straightforward with the, with the module to do. And there's one small feature. If you know that you can't accept the message at the time of consuming, like there's some other dependent component or something like, like that is down or whatever, but you know that the message may be correct. You can just return the message to the end of the queue and, and consume it afterwards. Okay, so that's it. Are there any questions? How about the persistence of messages in uh, RabbitMQ? Uh, is it solved somehow? Uh, you can set up uh, that in the RabbitMQ. Uh, there are two types of, of queues. There are persistent ones and not persistent. So, so not persistent are stored in memory. Persistent are, are stored to disk, so, so you are sure that even if, if there is an outage, you, you don't lose your messages. Uh, I wasn't talking about the high availability of, of, of the RabbitMQ, but this is, of course, uh, like the presumption that is necessary so that, so that it works as, as I presented. For example, we have, I think, five machines that run RabbitMQ cluster and two of the machines can, can have an outage and everything still 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 works as so Okay, so. thanks. So the uh, the acknowledgement that you sent back, um, is that sent back to the queue and then the the original uh, uh, sender is going to do a callback or a, a hook or yeah, I went quite quickly over this. Uh, I, I didn't show it in the in the in the architecture description, but it it uh, works as following: you when you consume a message, the RabbitMQ software just marks it as as a rat, and and waits for what happens. And when you process the message, you can acknowledge that you, that you processed it correctly. And in case you don't do the acknowledgement and the connection is broken in the meanwhile, the uh, RabbitMQ uh, gets it back to the queue so that another consumer can take that message. But does that mean that it's, it's the uh, queue itself is updated and not necessarily it's sent back to the original sender? or? No, no, no. The, se the sender, when when the message leaves the sender, it it stops caring about that. So, 
So, so the sender knows nothing about about the, what ha what happens after it sent the message into the exchange. But that means that the sender needs to check the queue uh, status again or for that specific acknowledgement. Has to be another. Y yes, uh, in case in case uh, the sender would. Uh, in, in case that the sender needs to be informed about about the processing of, of the consumer, uh, this is this is something that that I didn't show right. I, I was just sending the messages out, and, and the sender didn't care anymore. It just it just expected that that the links get downloaded. But if you wanted to know what uh, happens after afterwards, I would propose some kind of RPC which can be also implemented over over this uh, RabbitMQ. So so it would be probably best way to to introduce another channel of sending messages from the consumer back to the sender so so that it gets informed uh, what happened. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>